Welcome. This video is going to talk about chemical bonds and the three different types of chemical bonds that can form among various atoms. So a chemical bond is defined as the attractive forces that hold atoms together. And there's three kinds of chemical bonds that form. And there can be an attraction between the positive nucleus of one atom and the negative electrons of another atom, and that's called a covalent bond, and electrons are said to be shared between the two atoms. Or there can be attraction between a positive ion and a negative ion. Those are called ionic bonds, and those occur when atoms actually transfer electrons from one atom to another. And then the third possibility is a metallic bond, and that forms only between the same type of metal. So gold, pure gold, has metallic bonds between its atoms. Pure silver has metallic bonds between its atoms. So a chemical bond always involves the valence electrons of the two atoms that are bonding. And it's just a matter of what's going on with those valence electrons. Are they being shared or are they being transferred? So when we're talking about chemical bonds, we're really talking about chemical reactivity. Chemical reactivity is the tendency of a substance to undergo a chemical change. And what scientists realize is noble gases are ext extremely unreactive, so there's very little chemical reactivity, while all the other elements are reactive. So there must be something about a full outer shell, the S2 and the P6 being full, that makes an element really stable. So that means all other atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons to get this stable octet, and this is what we know as a chemical reaction. So I like to use the expression, eight is great, but two will do for elements one to five. That means for anything bigger than element number five, boron, they're going to gain or lose electrons to have a full S and a full P orbital at whatever their biggest energy level is. So that basically summarizes the octet rule that natural elements six to 92 need eight electrons in their outer shell to be what we call chemically stable or unreactive. So in the rest of this video, we're going to look specifically at what are called ionic bonds. And remember I said ionic bonds form when a positive ion attracts a negative ion. So what is an ion? Well, an ion is an atom that has gained or lost electrons, and positive ions are atoms that have lost electrons. Remember, you have an equal number of protons and electrons in an atom, so if you lose some of the negative electrons, you will have more of those positive protons left, and it will form a positive atom, which is now called an ion, to let you know there's a charge, it's no longer neutral. And they're specifically called cations, and I think of cation as spelt with that T as a plus sign, reminding me it's positive. So which kinds of elements tend to lose electrons? The metals do. How come? Because remember, remember metals are large, large losers. Why are large atoms the ones that lose? Because their electrons are further away from the nucleus, so it's harder for the nucleus to hang on and keep those electrons with the atom. So... Transition metals, remember, have the option of forming different kinds of cations because they could lose two or three electrons or as few as one, so they've got a lot more options. But the representative metals in families 1A, 2A, and 3A, we know they're going to lose just one, two, and three electrons to get that noble gas type configuration. So let's look at an example of an aluminum atom. If we write the noble gas configuration for an aluminum atom, it has 10 inner electrons represented by neon, and then it's got 3s2, 3p1. And because it's a metal, rather than adding five more electrons to the p orbital and taking on the configuration of argon, instead, aluminum is more likely to give up these three electrons, or it's more likely another atom will pull those three electrons off of aluminum, and when that happens, if those three electrons are removed, then we are left with an atom that has neon's configuration. But it also has a positive three charge on it, so we keep the brackets around it so we know this isn't actually an atom of neon, it's an atom with the same number of electrons as neon, but it also has a positive three charge because its nucleus is bigger than neon's. So here's some review questions to see if I'm making sense. Which family of metals should be the most reactive? Well, that's going to be group 1A. And the reason why is because these are the largest of all the metals. So they're the most likely to lose their electrons. And that's what makes metal 
um, reactive is losing electrons. My second question asks, how will lead become stable? Will it gain or lose electrons and how many? And if you find lead, you could look at its configuration and you would see its configuration is Xe, 6s2, and then this is actually a big one. It goes back to 4f14 and 5d10 and then 6p2. So we see that lead has four valence electrons. So um, is it going to tend to gain or lose? It's a metal, so it's going to tend to lose electrons. And again, because it's a fairly big atom compared to nonmetals, and it will tend to lose all four of those to become more stable and pick up the configuration of xenon. And then number three asks, draw the electron configuration for a barium atom before and after it becomes stable. So if I find barium, Barium has got two valence electrons, so its uh, configuration is Xe, and then it's just 6s2. So this is what it looks like before and after. It's going to give up those two electrons and leave behind an atom with xenon's configuration and a 2 plus charge on it. So if an atom is losing electrons, that means another atom is gaining them. And in fact, it means another atom is pulling or ripping those electrons off the atom that's losing. So these negative ions form because now they have more electrons than protons. And these are called anions. And I think of it as any negative ion. So nonmetals form anions because they're smaller. So it's going to be easier or take less energy to gain electrons than it will be to lose them. So when a nonmetal becomes an anion, we rename the element to an IDE ending. So when you see sodium chloride, IDE, that lets you know that it's not chlorine by itself. It's chlorine in a compound. And so again, we call it chloride. And other ones you've probably heard of are oxide, hydride, maybe even sulfide and nitride. So let's look at some examples with the nonmetals. Which family of nonmetals will be the most reactive? Well, the smallest family of nonmetals is actually 8A, but remember, they're already stable. So the most reactive family is going to be 7A, and that's because they're the smallest, so they're the most likely to gain electrons. And that's what makes nonmetals chemically reactive, is gaining electrons. How will oxygen become stable? Will it gain or lose electrons, and how many? Well, if I look, I see that oxygen is in group 6A or 16. So that lets me know there's six valence electrons. I also see it's a nonmetal. So that means it's more likely to gain than lose electrons. So I would expect it to gain two electrons to get a full shell of eight. And then finally, draw the electron configuration for a nitrogen atom before and after it becomes stable. So using the noble gas notation, I've got HE, not much of a savings there for 1S, and then I've got 2S2, 2P3. So I see that it's got five valence electrons. It's a nonmetal, so it's going to be gaining, not losing. So it needs to pick up three electrons. Oops, I got this backwards here, though. So it's going to tend to gain three electrons. So we'll get those from some metal looking to lose electrons. And this will become HE, 2S2, 2P6, which is like the noble gas neon. So I could have just written it as NE. Either way, it is now going to have a minus 3 charge associated with it because it's gained an extra 3 electrons. So to wrap up, a couple questions. How can you use the group A family numbers to decide if an atom will gain or lose electrons plus how many electrons it will gain or lose? So you can look at the group A family numbers and see if they're to the left or the right of the zigzag line. And we can assume metals will lose and nonmetals will gain. And then how many will it gain or lose? If it's a metal, it's going to lose all of them. And if it's a nonmetal, it's going to gain enough to get a total of eight in that outer shell. And then what is the name of the anion formed from nitrogen? That would be changed to nitride.